The Lord is good. His mercy is endure forever. Brothers and sisters, we have every cause to be thankful to the Lord that Yeshua HaMashiach came to this earth as a human, was incarnated as a human, went to the cross as a human to taste death for us. He experienced everything that was meant for us. The soul destined it shall die. He took it all upon himself. Then the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us, the Torah, the old covenant, he fulfilled it all on our behalf and then released grace to us so that by grace through faith we can be saved. We are reconciled to the Father and the blood he shed was the blood of the covenant, was the blood that, you know what, overthrew Satan. The blood that nullified every walk of darkness, that makes the walk of principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this age of non-effect concerning the least in the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, such a glorious plan of Elohim. And I want to encourage you, if there's anything we should learn and learn and learn and learn, it is that we may know him. Yeshua HaMashiach. Not just know about him, but experience him. So today, in lesson four of the course, 102 understanding Yeshua we're going to talk about the pre-existent Yeshua we need to know about his pre-existence because if you don't know then it's going to be difficult for you to apprehend his divinity and let me say this the course codes are going to change pretty soon when these courses are now this is now one of the 300 level courses you know what and that is for those who are going towards the end of their Global School of Mercy program. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to come to your throne of grace on the merit of the blood that Yeshua shed, and by his name we come. We ask that Holy Spirit will unveil scripture for us and grant us understanding in Yeshua's name. Amen. So today we talk about the pre-existing Yeshua, a survey of you know, truth in both the Old and New Covenants, the pre-existing nature of men and brethren in the synopsis, we're given nine dimensions of Yeshua which collectively make knowledge of him complete. And there are two other dimensions that we're not discuss. We'll go into it as we continue. So men and brethren, it's so important that we understand that everything about Yeshua is settled through the Holy Scriptures. He came to fulfill Scripture. And it is important we understand the principle in the kingdom. You don't just make any doctrine out of anything. You must have at least two scriptures that line up. That principle says in the book of Deuteronomy 19, 15, one witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin. If any sin that is sinned at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. And then in Matthew 18, 16, Yeshua says, but if he will not hear thee, then take the one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And Paul writing to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says, This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Even in the matter of receiving an accusation against any elder in the household of faith, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, 19, against an elder, receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. What well, someone wants to come and gossip a leader to you, you know what he said, to oh, please, if you won't mind, can we get some other person here? So, in Hebrews 20, verse 28, in Hebrews 10, 28, he that despised Moses' law, died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So that's a point. So in studying, that's a major point. So in studying about the divinity of Yeshua, we need to go through different scriptures to show that he who was called the son of a carpenter, the son of Mary, they, he who people knew his siblings, James, Joseph, Jude, and the sisters that he had, was not just a mere human being, was not just a mere prophet, but he was the incarnation of the pre-existent Elohim. Men and brethren, it's so important that we realize also that the Bible tells us in Revelation 13 verse 8 that he was, he says, all that dwell in earth shall worship him. We're talking about the Antichrist whose names are not in the book of life of the Lamb 
slain from the foundation of this world. That scripture tells us that redemption is not a plan B. Adam and Eve sinned, then God began to scratch his head, what do I do? And then he thought of, you know, bringing the seed of the woman. No, the pre-existence of Elohim and his omniscience and omnipresence means that he knew what would happen after the creation. Yet, he created man for fellowship. And when man fell, the promise of the seed of the woman was given. Brothers and sisters, we need to know the Lord has created us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that spirit and truth means we got to know the truth. If we know the truth, we are not going to miss it. For instance, let, let's talk about this again before we go into the lesson today. If we understand that salvation was not a plan B before the foundation of the world, Yeshua knew that Adam and Eve would miss it and he volunteered himself that they would come. Then it will, you, you now connect it with Ephesians chapter 1, where it says in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Yeshua, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Yeshua. Verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Read all of Ephesians chapter 1, one of the most glorious scriptures that tells us that he chose us in Yeshua before the foundation of the world. You know, some people fear because of, you know, at times people distort scripture and they do their own stuff like those who believe in predestination. Whether you sin, live in sin or not, if you're ordained to make it, you make it. If you, if you are ordained to condemnation, you must be condemned. Predestination has nothing to do with the gospel. But then that should not make us to now forget the positive aspect of predestination that is in the Bible. And that is that God chose us in Yeshua before the foundation of the world. Brothers and sisters, you are not a happenstance. You didn't just happen. You didn't just come to, you didn't just by your own power become saved. You are part of a product of a, an intelligent decision of an intelligent Elohim. The spring and source of all wisdom made a decision that he will bring you to this world and that you will be saved. And then other things, and you yielded to that ordering. You yielded to that ordering. Men and brethren, it's the same principle in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 28, down to, you know, the, the 39. It says, and we know. That all things work together for good to them that love Elohim, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, listen. Everything works together for you and I. Why? Because he says in verse 29, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, with your redemption is a divine purpose, not just to redeem our soul, but that we will be conformed to the image of his dear son. In other words, the ultimate son Yeshua was given so that through his death, which the world will remember tomorrow without knowing him, through his death, the world will be repopulated with sons of Elohim. Verse 30, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. That's why I say, what then shall we say to these things? If Elohim be for us, who can be against us? Who is it that can be against you? Who is it? Who born Pekin, they say in Africa? Who is Satan? Who are the demons that will come against you? Who destroy you? When the Lord had ordained to use you to impact your world, brothers and sisters, the more you understand the father Yeshua was a lamb slain before the foundation of this world. And that time he was slain is when you were chosen in him before the foundation of this world. It's going to make you to have a healthy self-esteem. If this truth latches in you, you know that nobody can come and destroy you. Nothing can change your, the trajectory of your life. Certain things about you may seem delayed. They cannot be denied. It means that a full measure of allocation, all that the Father has ordained with which to decorate you, to fulfill your destiny, they will come your way in due season. What is it you are waiting? 
What is it you are hoping for? Can I tell you something? John 16, 23, 24 says, Hitherto to you've asked nothing in my name. Yeshua says, ask and receive that your joy may be full. This is a time to know that he knew you before you were born. He knew you before Adam and Eve sinned. Your names, your, your everything about you is inscribed in his hand. He says, look, shall a woman forget her uh, suckling child? Yeah, in modern day London, they can. Because of career, you can be a child, put her in child care, rush off to work. A woman can do it. But they let him say, I cannot. You are inscribed in my hand. And that inscription didn't happen today, before the foundation of this world. Men and brethren. So let's also now look at some of the scriptures about the pre existing Yeshua. If you look at Genesis 1 26, God said, Let us make man in our own image and likeness. Yeshua was part of that decision. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We said it before in lesson one. When Adam and Eve fell, Genesis 3 15, uh, you know, the promise was, I put enmity between thee and the woman, and between the seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. That's what will be remembered tomorrow. That death at the cross, crucify him, crucify him. It was the bruising of his heel, but in so doing, he stamped out the authority and power of Satan, took away the keys of hell and death from him, that Satan cannot take anybody willy-nilly again to spend eternity with him in hellfire, except you allow him. But the Father has, through Yeshua, paid the price for you to escape his snare. And that promise that he will put enmity between the woman and Satan, Justin, it is for real. That's why Satan fights women more than men, because they carry the seed. They carry the seed. There is revelation in the woman. There is grace. There is betting capacity. There is capacity to conceive and bring forth. And Satan does everything. He throws the sink at women. So when you see any woman standing, give her a thumbs up. Give her double thumbs up. Because women, there is something about them. Satan knows. You know, when women, when man was created from the dust of the earth, and then he was rough hewn, and then from that rough nature, Elohim took, when it was time to create woman, he didn't go to the edge. He went to the man already created to take out a rib and covered it. Extra care, extra investment, extra. Satan knows that extra. Men and brethren, when it was time to, to deal with the issue of the Tower of Babel, Elohim said again, verse 23, the Lord said, lest he be like us. Sorry, when Adam and Eve sinned, and they will be chased out. In Genesis 3, 23, 22, 23, he said, the man is become as one of us. One of us, Elohim, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Godhead. And when it was time to deal with the Tower of Babel, Genesis 11, 5 to 7, let us go down. Let us go down. Then, not only that, let's now go to some more, even clearer issues. When Abraham went to war, and was coming back from war, Genesis chapter 14, 18 to 20, and Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High Elohim. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High Elohim, possessor of heaven and earth, and he blessed be the Most High Elohim, which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Men and brethren, this scripture is one of the ones that except you have revelation from the Lord, you wouldn't know. That Melchizedek was Yeshua. Is what we call a Christophany, the manifestation of the pre-existent Yeshua in time. Because if you read the book of Hebrews chapter 7, you see that it was clearly stated that he was not ordinary king. You say, look at uh, Hebrews 7 from verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High Elohim, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tent of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Take note of his title, king of righteousness, king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the son of Elohim, abided a priest continually. 
So Melchizedek was a Christophany, a, a, you know, a manifestation of the pre-existent Yeshua. And men and brethren, in verse 15 of that same Hebrews chapter uh, 7, it says, It is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but also but after the power of an endless life, for he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So that was Yeshua. And if you doubt that it was Yeshua, look at the dialogue between Yeshua and the Jews when he and them were talking. In the book of John chapter 8 from verse 51, Very I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? <laughs> and the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? Yeshua answered, verse 54. If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom you say that is your God. Yet you have not known me. But I know him, and if I should say I do, I know him not, I will be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Wow! He saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old. He a young man. He was thirty-three and a half years then. And thou hast seen Abraham? Yeshua said unto them, Very well I saw unto you, before Abraham was I am. So Yeshua was saying that Abraham who saw Melchizedek, that was me he saw. He rejoiced to see my day. He was glad. Brothers and sisters, even in, in Genesis 18, Christian religion presents, you know, Abraham saw three angels and the angels, you know, he saw, you know, he, he, he gave them hospitality and then he got a favor from, from the Lord. That Bible doesn't present it as angels so to say he presented it as the godhead coming down to execute judgment on sodom let's see genesis 18 the lord appeared unto him in the place of mamre and he sat in the tent in the heat of the day the lord appeared unto him he lifted his eyes and looked and lo three men stood before him he saw them he ran to meet them then if you go on on and on and on you see that in verse 17, the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great nation? For all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, for I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, that they should keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. And the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, not angels said, the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. So people say three angels, he saw. It was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he saw. Now, in verse 25, as Abraham was pleading his cause and interceding for Sodom, you know what he says, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Abraham was in a face-to-face -face encounter with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Man and brother, it's so important for us to know. What about the, the, the rock from where Israel was drinking water in the wilderness? You know what we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4? They did eat and drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Yeshua, his pre-existent brethren. Men and brethren, John the Beloved wrote, In the beginning was the word, the word was with Elohim, the word was Elohim, the same was in the beginning with Elohim. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, the light shineth in darkness, the darkness comprehended it not. John 1, 1 to 5. Men and brethren, John 1, 18. No man has seen Elohim at any time. The only begotten Son, 
which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. John 1.29, the very next day, John seeth Yeshua come unto him, said, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim, we take it away the sins of the world. John 5.37, the Father himself, which hath sent me, had borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. So he was telling them, they were seeing him. John 6, 46, not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of Elohim, he had seen the Father. If you read all of the book of uh, John 6 from 30 to 60, you see where Yeshua was in dialogue with the Jews and talking about him and his relationship with the Father in eternity past. And then, men and brethren, if you have time, read John 8, 14 to 19 and 23 to 29, where he was also in dialogue with the Jews concerning his uh, identity. Then in John 14, 1, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me. Don't be troubled. Verse 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto Father but by me. And then he went into that dialogue with Philip. Philip said in verse 8, Show us the Father, it sufficeth us. Verse 9, Yeshua said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, then show us the Father? Believest you not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Very, very clear. He had been before time. If you look at John 17, Yeshua said this to the Father. He spake, then said Yeshua, and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him life, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim and Yeshua whom thou hast sent. I've glorified thee on earth. I finished the work which thou givest me to do, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with this glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He began to tell the Father, the mission you sent to me, I'm completing it, and now it's time for you to clothe me back again with the glory. That's what the resurrection and the ascension was, was him being clothed back with the glory so that he would go to heaven. And so all he did from the day of conception and birth to the day he gave up the ghost on the cross, that period of time was for him in his humanity to be the lamb that would take away the sins of the world, to be the one that would recover the kingdom which was lost in Adam, to be the one that would take away the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us, to be the one that the mosaic requirements would be fulfilled in him, and then from him would proceed, pro, proceed grace for us. And so the Son was simply a visible manifestation of the Father. That's what the book of Hebrews tells us. Elohim, who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins. That's what happened at the cross. Our sins were purged. And what happens? And sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Brothers and sisters, it is important to catch the revelation of Yeshua's divinity and Yeshua's humanity. And that as a human, when he went to the cross, he went to the cross to pay the price in full, that nothing again shall hold us back Neither Satan, nor demons, principles of powers, rulers of darkness of this age. He has paid the price that in the Roman Praetorium, as they flogged him, all those lashes were the price he was paying for our health. So that any health situation you have, no matter how serious, how detailed, you can actually tap into the reality that is already a done deal. In Isaiah, he said, by whose stripes you will be healed. 
in first peter when he was reporting the same thing to verse 24 by whose stripes you were healed it's already a done deal he has done it already it's for us to cash the check by faith to believe the lord that whatever comes against you comes against him that you are the apple of his eyes that when he said at the cross it is finished it was truly finished. I want to say once again, you can pick up this book, Legacies of Christ, one of our earliest books, and then you can also pick up the other one, Understanding Yeshua, and read it in this season. Soak yourself. Soak yourself. Paul said that I may know him. I want to know him. I want to come to a place where I'm conformed to his death, where my old man is crucified with him and taken away so that I can live in the newness of the new life. Brothers and sisters, how hard are you chasing after to be like Yeshua, to know him, to have an experiential understanding of him? And what we're doing in this course is to bring forth the revelations in the Holy Scripture so you can escape the snare of the pseudo-kingdom movement that says, preach the kingdom, don't preach Yeshua, don't preach Jesus. How can you ignore the king who is the center and the second first of the kingdom? So that you can escape the snare of those people who look at him as a mere rabbi, a mere Jewish prophet. Brothers and sisters, the God of the whole universe, at a particular point in time, when the blood of bulls and rams could not atone for sacrifice, the principle in the scripture is the soul that sinned it shall die. So what I deserved to die for my sin, he came and took my place and died for me. So the life I now live should not be my own. I have no business determining what I want to do by myself or what I think I want to be. All I need to do is to be a vessel like this is a vessel holding warm water to be a vessel in his hand to do with me whatever it pleases him. That is what the Lord wants us to do. That is what makes all the difference. To come to that place in our walk with him where the, resurre the, the death at the cross humbles us that divinity became humanity to take my place so that I won't have to die. He dies on my behalf and then I'm no longer living like Galatians 2.20 says. I'm no longer going to live my life. I allow him to use this vessel to do what he wants to do. And I have this confidence that nobody can cut down by one inch of time. Nobody can cut down by one hour the years appointed to this vessel and to you. That nothing can stop you from being who the Lord ordained you to be. If, the, if Elohim came on your behalf in Yeshua to pay the price, then who is it? What demon? What principality? What power? As Africans will say again, who born Pekin? Who born Pekin? That is to say, which power? What, by what power can Satan ever destroy what was redeemed with the precious blood of Yeshua? Yours is a hidden life. Your life is hidden with Yeshua. And that's why he said, love not the world. Anytime you love the world, you are taking a trip outside the place of safety to a place where you are now exposed to the God of this world, Satan. You got to know that's really what worldliness is all about. Every time in your mind, in your heart, in your mind, you make room for the world and give the world space to dominate you. You want to be like the world? Does that thought, when you could to practice it, you have gone out of the safety of he who says, Your life is hidden. Yours is a hidden life. Colossians 3 1 to 3. Yours is a hidden life. Your life is hidden in Yeshua, in the Father. It will take Satan to destroy the Father, destroy Yeshua before he can get at you. That's the reality. That's why he said, if you are risen with Yeshua, if truly were crucified with him and resurrected with him, then our heart should be in heaven, the headquarter of the kingdom, the capital of the kingdom. That throne of grace is where our heart should be. Our mind should be wrapped around him so that we get to know his will, his purpose, his pattern, and we're just vessels. And he leads us. He guides us. That is what true worship is all about. We love you, brethren. And by way of assignment, please cite seven of the scriptures discussed in this lesson, which gave you the deepest understanding that Yeshua existed before the date he was incarnated in the earth dream as a human. 87 scriptures. Number two, please show 
Only let us know if you will share these truths to help other people to have a better understanding of Yeshua. Because 2 Timothy 2.2 2 says, And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. And I won't say this before we finish. Brothers and sisters, why not let's share this video and make sure more people hear. And I want to ask every one of you, please don't go outside the place of safety. Even this so-called lockdown, the Lord said, Come into my chamber until the danger be overpassed. If you cannot discipline yourself and take this time as a time to invest in knowing him more and more, and you are after the cucumber and the onion of life on the other side of the pandemic, you might get into unnecessary trouble. Why not get to a more intimate relationship with the Father in this season so that Yeshua is so fills you, you don't have space in your heart for, to crave for anything outside of him. You know what? The Lord is faithful. The Lord is gracious, and the Lord will keep you. The Lord will preserve you. This evening, please come together. We'll start about 6, 6 30 or so, higher 7 o'clock. We're going to continue our study on Yeshua. These lessons are very critical. Each one is important. And by the grace of the Lord, we encourage you to take it seriously every single day. Take 40 minutes to study these things and pray them in and the Lord will strengthen you. Father in heaven, let your name be glorified. Let the word that has gone forth produce the fruit of you, the outcome you ordained before the foundation of this world, that your people will get to know you and the power of your resurrection be made conformable unto your death. Lord, bless you. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Grace.